Michael Allegra and Aaron Haley Mayer were both students at Martin Country High School. Aaron was witty and smart and a little reserved. One day Michael asked Aaron out. Soon they were in love and they moved in together, had Tristan and got married in February 2000. Together all three were their own little universe. But things changed. Aaron eventually left him to live with another man, and she and Michael agreed to share custody of their only child. The couple had been separated but never divorced. Michael Allegra wasn't concerned about Tristan's welfare. Aaron had worked at a day care center and he felt she was good with children. About once a week, he and Tristan would go out to dinner, or go to the mall. His son was talkative, like him. And he also liked to read a lot, like his mother. Tristan was Michael's best friend and Aaron's best friend. In 2007 Michael Allegra was arrested on a fraud charge involving prescription drugs, and spent about five months in jail. He was out for a couple of months when he was nabbed for a probation violation that landed him in jail again in late 2007. Michael hoped to see his son Tristan again after his release from the St. Lucie County Jail. Then he got called to the chaplain's office and was told the grim news. It was in late April 2008 that Michael talked to Tristan for the last time. It was in jail where he counted the days to his release, after which he planned to see eight-year-old Tristan. But just a few days earlier, on Christmas 2008, he learned that his wife, Erin Allegra, confessed to police that she had suffocated their son in his sleep that morning. Michael doesn't know why she did it. But he does know that he'll spend the next several days taking care of his son one last time by planning his funeral. Aaron Allegra started having serious financial problems in August 2007, and lost a string of jobs. Also, a man with whom she was having an affair broke off the one-and-a-half-year relationship. She had been pregnant with the man's child but lost the baby. She said she lost her house, she lost her job and she didn't want to continue living. She said she had contemplated suicide several times over the past few months, adding that that she didn't want to leave her son behind if she killed herself. On December 24, 2008, she rented a room at the Holiday Inn to execute her plan. That evening the two spent time in the hotel watching movies and cartoons. After the two ate dinner, Aaron Allegra gave her son Tristan, Advil pills to put him to sleep. She allowed him to sleep a couple of hours. Then, between 3 and 4 a.m. next morning she used the hotel pillow, placing it over eight years old Tristan's face, causing him to stop breathing. After seeing that her son had no pulse and was not breathing and after she was sure Tristan was dead, she slid her wrists. After smothering her son, she got in the room's bathtub and tried to kill herself by slitting her wrists and arms but the razor blades were not sharp enough. When the suicide attempt was unsuccessful, she called 911 and was taken to the St. Lucie Medical Center, where she was treated for minor cuts to her wrists and arms. After being released from the hospital, Erin Allegra was questioned by police and she confessed. She added she was well aware that what she did was wrong. In a letter to Tristan left in the hotel room, Erin Allegra wrote, you'll always be my sweet boy. The close-knit neighborhood of Southeast Bowie Street were shocked and saddened to hear about the incident, when they heard that the woman they knew as courteous but not real sociable had killed her eight-year-old son and tried to kill herself on Christmas Day. One neighbor said he often saw Erin Allegra, either alone or with her son, a third grader at Mariposa Elementary School, walking on the street. They seemed to have a friendly relationship. Erin Allegra was charged for first-degree murder. She was also charged with aggravated child abuse, which carries a penalty of up to 30 years in prison. Shackled and wearing gold prison scrubs, Erin looked incredibly small as she stood before circuit judge, who accepted the plea deal and levied the sentence, life in prison for the first-degree murder charge, 
plus 30 years to run consecutively for the child abuse charge. As part of the sentencing hearing, Tristan's paternal grandmother Margaret Allegra of Jensen Beach, addressed her former daughter-in-law. If you had committed suicide, it would have been hard enough on us, Margaret Allegra said. We would have been devastated. But we would still have Tristan. What you have done takes my breath away. You took something very precious from our lives. To take an innocent life, I don't know what made you do that. Chief Assistant State Attorney said, spending the rest of her life behind bars thinking about how she killed her son, is probably a much greater punishment for her.